Also, I'm wearing black today, which feels like I'm like, copying Dan. You look great, Jim. <laughs> Harry, the blue. It's a real Dan vibes today. I can't abide it. All right, I'll take it off. <laughs> Nightmare Fuel. G'day, I'm Harry and welcome to the Loot Drop. I don't know if you've noticed this weird new gaming trend. No, not the one on TikTok where someone's talking on the top half and there's like subway surfers gameplay on the bottom half to keep you focused. I'm talking about game developer apology tweets. You know, a game developer will rush the development of their game to hit their release deadline, which results in a buggy, laggy, and sometimes completely unplayable game, which results in a huge uproar from fans that take to social media and review sites to air their grievances, which results in the developer tweeting out an apology saying that they're aware of the issues and that they promise to deliver updates to iron it all out. <gasps> This year, we've already seen a bunch of these apology tweets from Jedi Survivor for clunky performance on PC to The Last of Us port for clunky performance on the PC. Oh, don't get uh, Cyberpunk. For clunky performance on everything. Now, we've seen so many apologies that it's become a bit of a meme. Someone's even started compiling them into a mosaic and as funny as it is to see them all together like that, it also sucks. Like, why are there so many apologies from developers? Why, why is this becoming a common thing? On the one hand, I, I totally get it. The developers are taking responsibility for their bad or unfinished game. But how effective are these apologies anyway? Because for me personally, when I see an apology tweet, I, I don't feel better. It doesn't fill me with relief. I just don't really care. I guess because I don't really get angry at a developer when a game's bad. And I reviewed Forspoken. Um, did you not just see me take out that gnarly beast? A lot of these apologies focus on performance issues across platforms. Your Cyberpunk, Jedi Survivor, Last of Us. I, I just feel like maybe the chicken's been ripped from the oven a bit too early. Maybe instead of serving up a plate of E. coli and then apologizing for causing waves of projectile vomit, how about you just keep it in the oven for a little longer? Now, Jem, you, like you love cyberpunk, yeah? Oh, 100%. I was super keen for it, like, as soon as it was announced. But, like, the longer things were dragged out, I kind of just lost interest. Mm. So much so that when it finally did get released and all the backlash came about for missing content, performance issues, I kind of just didn't really care. Yeah. I played it for about an hour on the PS4, right on release day. Didn't like what I saw, so I let it sit on a shelf for two years. And honestly, I'm really glad that I did, because after two years worth of updates, it's now one of my favourite games. As Everyone in this office knows because I won't shut up about it. True. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Do I wish the powers that be at CD Projekt Red had just postponed it until it was at the stage it is now? Totally. But there were so many eyes on the project, too many investors and higher ups wanting to get it out the door as quickly as possible. I just don't think that was going to happen. And that's a problem in and of itself. My take though, with social media being what it is right now, we have unprecedented access to the people who work on and develop our favourite titles. And the line between valid criticism and entitlement is mighty thin. These public apologies are really the only way that companies can sort of humanise themselves, admit fault and promise to do better. They're not there to make you feel better about what's happening. They're there to control a narrative for when people inevitably jump online to voice their feelings. The people I feel the most sorry for are the devs in the firing line who have no choice but to cop abuse from randos for things that are out of their direct control. Oh, that being said though, um, hey, CD Projekt Red Management, because you're totally watching this, um, Johnny V Romance When, asking for a friend. That's her. It's also him. Now, I personally don't care if a game is bad. Like, mm. I like what I like and I dislike what I dislike. Yeah. But when a game's unfinished, that's that's a whole different story. Especially when people are paying full price for a full game. Getting an apology and promise for a full product later just feels tacky and lame. But you're right, Jem. There's always a bigger picture and it's certainly sad when developers have to cop abuse online for their for their work. Now, what, what do you think? Audience at home, how do you feel about the developer apologies? Do you think it should become the industry standard or are you furiously indifferent like me? Let us know in the comments. Oh, uh, sorry guys, gotta go again. I wasn't paying it. No, oh, it's okay. No, oh, it's all right. No. I'm so stoked. I can't believe we get to learn how to make video games. Me too. Right, welcome, welcome to an introduction to video game design, the first step on your exciting journey to the world of game creation. Now, let's kick off with arguably one of the most important modules, Fundamentals of Game Development. 
the apology. Now, when you first write your apology, make sure you have double and triple checked it for typos. Okay, we don't want a golem situation on our hands now, do we? Wait, uh, what are we talking about? Well, in their apology for the golem game, Data Lake Entertainment called it the Lord of Ring. <laughs> uh, am I in the wrong class? I'm meant to be in video game development. So, have you seen game audiences lately? They are brutal. They can and will bombard you with bad reviews and threats if you slight them in any insignificant. So, you need to know how to apologize. Okay, that's all. So, well when is it best practice to have this apology written? Well, realistically, you want to have your apology written before you even start making your game. Fail to plan, plan to fail. Okay, I, I can't do this. This is weird. Sorry. Perfect. Wow, an apology before we've even started the course. He's a natural. Yes, yes, I am. Sorry. It just said I am Professor Harry. The professor of video game development, specialising in apology tweets. Now, when you write a good apology, say it. I don't mean it. Write that down. Now it's time for my favourite segment where we share news too small to elaborate on, but too big to ignore. It's ba oh no, make the pop attack. It's barely news. Great job, Peanut. High five. Ooh. Rockstar co-founder and creative director Dan Hauser is returning with a new company, Absurd Ventures. Now, it's a media company, so it doesn't just make video games, but live action productions, animations, interactive content, books, graphic novels, and scripted podcasts. It's barely news. Dead Cells, the 2D roguelike platformer, is being adapted into an animated series and a trailer is out. It'll be a run of 10 episodes each at 7 minutes long and we cannot wait. Hi Dawkin! Hi Dawkin! Say the barely, barely news! <laughs> Xbox Game Studio Chief Matt Booty confirmed that Microsoft will no longer develop first party games for Xbox One consoles and will now only focus on Xbox Series X and S. The last game they'll develop for the Xbox One is Minecraft. Ha <laughs> Akira Bailey News. Hideo Kojima won't direct the new Death Stranding movie. It's Bailey News. Ew. Valve is ditching battle passes in Dota 2 because players don't buy them. Bailey News. Speaking of microtransactions, Chocobo GP has been released without them. It's Bailey News. That's the loot drop coming out this week is Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life on PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and Switch. Master Detective Archives Rain Code on Switch. What's the time o'clock? It's Crime O'Clock coming out on Switch. Everybody want to switch on the, you'll never guess it, the Switch. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective Remaster on the Switch. And Inner Ashes. Speaking of the Ashes, Australia won. Sorry, let's do that again. <laughs> That's the end of the Loot Drop, but you can catch more of us on Thursdays on uh, YouTube and TikTok. We'll be streaming funny games here and there, 4 p.m. Thursdays. Be there or else. That is a threat. Look, I've got something for you. <gasps> Thank you. Yeah, I kissed a stuffed plush prince and you turned it back. Look, I'll take it over peanuts. This yeah. is fine. This doesn't shed nearly as much. Little kitty. Little kitty. I get it! Would you like to see my baby? <laughs> I would like to see the baby. Bye gamers, four oh. gamers, four oh, gamers, four oh, oh, gamers. Sorry. Can you turn his awful face to the camera a little bit more? <laughs> Excuse me. Could be really careful. He's can you, can you, can you make him say barely news? Barely news.